Hi, welcome to So Like Dotty, I'm Alison. And, um, well, apologies first of all, because I did say that I was likely to have my um, pattern hacking vlog ready to go with you guys today. I need to spend a bit more time researching it and I don't want to rush it. Um, I'm not an expert by any means, I've not got any qualifications, but I want to spend a bit more time on that. Um, I've asked the other vloggers for some input, um, so it's work in progress. So this is a little bit of a different one, and I just thought, um, got there's two parts to it. Um, the last bit of it, if you're not interested, just, yeah, scoot on past it, doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is cover what I kind of use as my core favourite patterns and also I've kind of signed up and started doing the Liberty Beauty Drop and I'm, I know this is a sewing channel but I did do a like what I'm doing with my makeup and skincare a little while ago and lots of you were interested in that so I'll share with you because I've had my first box as well so let's dive into some patterns together let me know as always in the comments the sort of you know if you've used things how you've used it if that's your favorite or where i've shared a top what your favorites are. i'm really interested in that so it would be great if you could do that in the comments and um, and yeah i hope you enjoyed this it is a little bit different and as usual in the allison way um like i'm as organized as i normally am i mean why would it be anything different I have put some lipstick on for you though and I've even sprayed perfume before I started recording so I do make an effort for you. Um, so I thought we'd just start. I'm saving dresses till the end because I'm a dresses girl as you know. So I thought I'd start first of all with tops. Now I am, I'm getting like that. You know when you think you get lipstick? Is that alright? Mm. Okay, let's go again. So with tops, I don't wear an awful lot of separates, but I do sometimes, and I do have some that have become particular favourites. So the first one I'm going to start with is what I would say is for a lot of people who are beginners and experienced people, a bit of a go-to pattern, won't be a shock, and it's the Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper or jumper dress. This was probably the first jersey garment I think I possibly made when I returned to sewing which is like three years ago now and that year I did a couple of jumper dresses slightly longer than this um, and I really liked them I wore them with leggings and then probably two years ago I started to make the um, the jumpers and you've got lovely Sam there in that picture there model and that jumper so what do I like about the billy I'll be honest I reached a point where I was like, I don't really know if I should start looking for different sweatshirts. And there are loads. I do, I do really like the puffed sleeve version. That works. That really works for my vibe. But I have also made it in the regular sleeve option. And one of the things I wasn't keen on was that I felt that it was coming too high up on my neck. I don't really like stuff that's here. I think years ago I used to wear like sort of polo necks and things, but I just... I don't like it anymore. I think it's like part of my anxiety. If I'm feeling anxious, I feel like I'm being choked. And I think when I've got things around my neck, it's just not comfortable. One of the things that I twigged is, like when I put it together, I'd probably generally overlock most of it. And when I was putting the neckband in, I was just overlocking it. So I would attach the neckband to the edge of the jumper and just overlock around the edge. But Tilly and the buttons have a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So when I eventually twigged and it took a while and I did it with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance, guess what? The neck came a lot lower down. Hello. How obvious was that? So it became a favourite again. And last year it became a bit of a winter staple in my wardrobe. I made it in a couple of colours and I made it cropped. So the, the dress I've got on today is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo. I had an inch onto the bodice. And what I did was I altered this pattern, didn't put the bottom band on, but I made it so it finished here, which is kind of, I wear dresses on a bit of a, I like to have a high waist. So this would normally be smock. I'll lower it down, sorry. I'll lower it down so it's more towards my waist, but a high waist. And all I did in winter last year was laid up with thermal leggings, thermal vest underneath, and um, a cropped billy jumper. And if I got hot at work, I'd just take it off. I'd have a nice bright colour dress on still um, and I'm doing the same this year that I've still got them from next, last year but I've already got different colours planned for this year so that's my first top 
I don't think it's going to be like a three hour vlog this one so bear with me um probably the first woven top that I did was a firm favorite of a lot of people which is Friday Pattern Company sagebrush top Friday Pattern Company um block pattern block really works for my shape I do really really like it I've not made everything that's come out but I generally Chelsea's vibe I really get and I really like so this um is an absolute staple I've hacked it and put a skirt on and turned it into a dress um, and I've used the seam the sleeves from this um in the indigo dress so this is the normal indigo puffed sleeve option which is in the add-on pack but sometimes if I want a puffier sleeve, I just drop the sagebrush sleeves into it. I do make them longer, so you can get some variation. I do find the length of the top um, quite long. I'll show you the line drawing. So I do tend to shorten it a little bit. I would probably tend to wear it tucked in, I would say. But I've made it in, I don't know, I must have made seven or eight of these. And hello, the size range is amazing. And the fabric pattern options are amazing. And... One of the things I do love about um, Chelsea is that she does the video so longs on YouTube. So sometimes I'm not great with following pattern instructions. Um, I'm a visual learner and I find that really helpful. So that is that one. The other top that I've made, hmm, three or four of this year and I really like, is from the Dressmaker's Closet. Now I am a brand ambassador for Jane's but I... I I wouldn't be an ambassador for anything if I didn't like it and embrace it. Um, so when this one first came out, it's a pussy bow blouse. I was a little bit, oh God, around my neck. But as you can see from the picture of Jane modelling it there, it doesn't come too high up on your neck. You can do, I would say even the pussy bow blouse isn't too over the top. Um, it's about, I'm going to say, maybe two inches tops, like to look at, maybe not even that. Or... You can do it, where am I at, with this narrower tie. Um, so Jane's size range for this blouse goes from UK 6 to 22. Um, the, everything that I'm sharing with you today I've shared in previous vlogs, so you can kind of go back and have a look at that. But again, it works really nicely in woven fabrics. And I've also, um, I'm about to, I have made a skirt and worn it as a dress, but I actually prefer it joined together as a, as a dress. So um, I've got one of those in the pipeline at the moment okay so that's kind of where i'm at with tops um next i thought i'd do the bottom end so let's do skirts first i did pull out this one because earlier this year when the friday pattern company saturday skirt set came out i made three i think of the skirts and i have worn them and i kind of thought oh this is becoming my favorite pattern it's flat waisted elastic at the back i did make one of the tie shirts it's just not quite quite me um really like it on other people it's just not me however that one's kind of going in the drawer because i pattern tested this for jane and i've been holding knickers in a knot about it because it had like a fitted zip and at the time i was like oh god me bloating and stuff anyway i've made i made two of these as part of the pattern test i've got another one planned i absolutely love this skirt so again at the moment this is in a size 6 to 22 from the dressmaker's closet the sadie skirt mine very much looked like jane's um one on that picture sort of a plain skirt with the ruffle on as you can see there are two options to do it with and without pockets and with panels i've recently talked about this and um, both of the ones i've got made at the moment are in different types of linen um but i think it's great in denim it, it's great in any woven fabric at all all of the pattern testers loved it and i've worn mine way more than i thought i would um quite often for work paired up with the ava blouse because they just go together so nicely but equally in the winter i'd probably wear a billy jumper with with that and happy days so yeah that would be that's my only skirt option really in terms of trousers i have got the peppermint magazine wide leg trouser pattern i've had that for a couple of years and i'm hoping once i lose a bit more weight to kind of to go for something that is more fitted i just know that that's going to take more time and effort to make i suppose it's one of those things that i'm a little bit nervous about because i've not kind of done that you know that like a fly opening on a trouser i, I get does anybody else sort of 
just procrastinate too much stuff because I've got fabric that I could make it with and that when I lose weight it won't be the end of the world if I remade them in a different size so maybe it's something I'll get to soon but the first trousers like many people that I made were from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book I think when you're first starting off particularly Till Tilly's a basic sort of range if you like really appeals to and um, people who would just find the feet with sewing this was one of the books for me the patterns are at the back and um, you can use the isbn number and download them from the website and um, but i've made oh, i don't know how many pairs probably about six pairs of the sapphire trousers um i've done them cropped i've done them full length you can alter it as you see cutting time 20 minutes sewn time approximately one hour 15 minutes again slightly flat fronted let me get a good angle on that and um, elasticated back and the size range for that tilly sizes are a size 1 to 10 which is a uk 6 to 24 and um, i've also i'm just going to flip forward and see if i can find the picture so i've also made them as dungarees i used a black bed sheet and made it into dungarees and i don't know if it's further back further forward i made a play suit for my daughter this is all the same pattern but you do use a slightly different rise and um, there is a different pattern piece for the crotch for the rise for the jumpsuit and the dungarees and um, there's lots in this book that i did do i've not shared them um, at all lots of people who've been learning to sew with me have made these the tab of the t-shirt is a great make in here i didn't buy this from the tilly side i bought it from one of those kind of well i just went on google and, and bought it on there and um, but i do these are for my daughter she has the trousers and i tend to use this as the pattern for pajama bottoms for her as well and um, because i know the size and the fit it's like a nice comfy loungewear sort of fit and um, so that is the sapphire trousers and um, i'm sure there'll be lots of you going yeah love it and then along came friday pattern company saguaro set and this just blew my mind now the top as it is lots of you have made it and it looks amazing i've said it before it i just couldn't get it to work for me with kind of my bust and things but what i did do and i've mentioned it before is hack the top and um, i call it my two back hack and there is a, a a blog post about that on the friday pattern company website but the trousers i adore absolutely adore i particularly love this technique with the elastic um, which I think might have been used in the Tilly and the Buttons new SD set as well. Um, do it with or without pockets. Um, I just, you know, if it's got a slope like that for that pocket, I just um, extend the pack. Like when I'm cutting out, I just extend it up and ignore that, that bit. I don't like pockets. I always feel like I should apologise for that. So the same size range that I mentioned earlier for those. Um, I think this last summer... This probably, I, I don't know, this is just me. I think this was probably one of the most popular patterns last summer. It just hit the ground running and everybody was making it, talking about it, wearing it. Um, lovely, really nice. And um, I did make this the first time about three years ago from the paper pattern, um, but it, it's been... Um, revised i don't know if that's the right word so another friday pattern company not separates but i wanted to include a couple of like jumpsuits and um, so i've got this one which is the friday pattern company avenir jumpsuit which you can do long or short sleeve you can have it on or off your shoulder and um, i've got one that i made recently you've, you've seen in a recent vlog and on maybe on instagram in a black with daisies on and um, i've made it in um chambray denim before um, it's a lovely make and on next week's vlog hanging right there but I'm not going to show you it today um, I was going to make one of these for my holiday but it ended up being I didn't need to make it um, I've got more than enough stuff but I ended up um, making the top short sleeve and I've actually added on the Davenport dress and bottom I'll come to that shortly and turned it into a dress um, and that's the, for me I find because I use the same size for the for the top and the bottom in this pattern range, that the if you want to kind of mix and match your tops and bottoms, I just lie one pattern piece down and put the other one down and think, oh, actually, yeah, they're the same width when they go together with an elasticated waist. So it's a really simple pull-on um, 
and I think you can style it up or down so that is a favourite for me but also that flexibility to turn it into a skirt I wanted to share with you because what I used to do that before that pattern came out and I have made a dress in a, like a flamingo pattern and um, so you'll have seen that on on the vlog I've shared the week before I'm, I'm recording these before my holidays so I'm trying to get my timeline right this McCall's pattern I'm not sure if this is available still um but it's very similar it's cut as a raglan top I bought this to make a dress I knew I was never going to make the bottoms because they were a tapered leg but I, I it was probably the first thing I did that I thought I was like pattern hacking was taking the top and adding a skirt onto it and that first summer of sewing I probably had four or five summer dresses that were like this so this one is different because this one has a ruffle across and you can see on the picture you can do it with or without the ruffle and um, where this one doesn't but I mean there's no reason why you couldn't just add the ruffle there you go okay how are we doing we're doing pretty well okay now in terms of coats i've only made one in 30 years that's the last time i made one so my favorite would have to be the one that i made so i've picked it out and that is the um who makes it paper cut patterns nova coat so i made this last year now i did buy it in the paper pattern and it's in one of those weird but funny size ranges um, and I could almost kick myself for it first of all the pack I find the packaging a bit weird so it kind of opens like this um so I've got the UK size 16 to 34 and the other size range I think is like something like a 6 to a 14 well I, I knew it was like quite an oversized fit but I was a bit worried that I w if I went for the smaller range, it wouldn't have fit me last year. And I think I made the right move with that. But now I've lost weight. I'm like, oh, I bought the pattern. And now it's too big. Um, so if I want to make this again this year, I'm, I don't know whether I'm, I can just down, like sort of alter the pattern to downsize it. Um, I brought up the line drawings for you so you can see I do fancy making the jacket version of it so I may do that in some fabric and just see what the fits like obviously I've got one from last year that I can try on um, in terms of the instructions it's probably just me but I found it easier to follow somebody's vlog it was like a two-part vlog and I basically did it from there because when I cut it out I was like how on earth does this go together mostly around where the sort of the pockets are you end up with these very random shaped well random for me shaped pieces but um there are quite similar patterns out there so um i am going to make at least another coat this year i do have a simplicity quite a traditional like long oversized coat that might be an option for me to make um i don't know i'm like it's too early for me to be thinking about that well, I'll be thinking about it soon because it'll be the end of September when you're watching this and I will be thinking about it soon. Um, right, are we ready? Do we need to, a loo break, snacks, drinks or anything? Because we're moving into dresses. So I'm not going to dwell too long on these, but my favourite new make of this summer, I've talked about it a lot in my last few vlogs, is the Ariana woven dress from Stylark, which is very, very similar to the sew over it dress that's in the summer dream and ebook that i can't remember the name out of so you can see it's got that shirt back lots of people have made this and um, so amelia um oh god who else i was just watching somebody's vlog and they had it on it in a lovely not a vintage fabric but it reminded me of a real like a picture of my mum in the 1950s and um, a real vintage look um and I kind of thought, yeah, I'd quite like that for next year. So that is that. As usual, style our um, instructions. That's it. There you go. Um, so if you're a, a beginner, unless it's something straight, fairly straightforward, I would don't dive into style art because literally this is the instructions. So there's a picture on the front. We've got that and we've got that and that's it. So you do need to have a bit of knowledge and understanding of sewing to to go with those um when did this come out probably about a year ago jane launched the nell t-shirt dress um i wasn't a brand ambassador for jane then i don't think i was no i don't think i was i can't remember 
but I adore this dress. I think I've got maybe three short sleeve versions, three long sleeve versions. Love the long sleeve version. That was an add-on pack Jane brought up. So you can kind of have a slightly higher neck, not too high at all, long or short sleeves. Obviously you've got the little ruffle on the bottom there. This is like, this is my secret pyjamas, but in a dress. So in the summer, I've just worn the short sleeve t-shirt dress. Great pull on. Um, I think I had one on in my last week's vlog. Um, and in the winter, the long sleeve one, brilliant again. Thermal leggings, thermal vest underneath, layered up if, if needed. Um, and I love it. Absolutely love it. So there are more of these. Again, at the moment, that one's still in size 6 to 22. Um, there is a t-shirt option in this as well. Um, but the the bodice shape, um, length, etc. in the dress is different to the t-shirt because obviously it's a lot longer. Um, and it is a fitted t-shirt. But um, some of the people made this when they were doing... Um, the sort of like dotty dressmaking course with me um, and if they didn't want it to be as tapered in they just made it sort of straighter but it is a more fitted t-shirt if you want the t-shirt that's not as fitted right a pattern company have just brought out their new one which is for free or pay as you want to um, on their website or in the make it simple book you've got the to lean the buttons tab of the t-shirt as well but yeah lots more of these already planned for this winter because I absolutely love it goes together like a dream and um, obviously you can sew your jersey on your sewing machine but if you've got an overlocker you can just overlock most of it so earlier i mentioned using the skirt part of the davenport dress and um, friday pattern company have a couple of dresses so they've got the westcliff dress the hughes dress and the the other dress that i've forgotten which is kind of high up and very drapey which i've got the pattern for and i made one and I need to revisit it at some time. And that's not really helpful, is it? Because I can't remember the name. And at the moment, you're probably all shouting the name at the screen and I can't remember. But in terms of their dresses, this is definitely my favourite. So um, it's not the best picture to show you the details. So let me find the line drawings. Um, so in terms of length, you can see from the model, it's probably the shorter version is just above the knee. Above the knee doesn't work for me. So the pattern piece that's the actual main part of the skirt, I've got written on it. Do not cut at this length, make sure you lengthen. Why haven't I just recut that piece out as a longer pattern piece? So I make sure that I do that. I don't know. Anyway, so I do that. I always go to one that I've got on a hanger, measure how long it is and redo it. So there's an action for me to take and then add a ruffle on the bottom. I'm not keen on the shoulder ruffles because I'm quite broad in the shoulder anyway. So you don't need to put them on if you don't want to. And I'm not keen on pockets, so I just cut two backs. Um, it uses the burrito technique to do the yolk. So if you've not done that before, there's a great sew along. And every time I make it, I just go back to that sew along. I quite like sewing with Chelsea's sew alongs because you feel like you're sort of chatting with a friend um, and sewing with a friend, you know what I mean? And I just keep pausing it and going, oh, was that bit and going back to it again. Um, so it's, um, is it classed as a beginner pattern? Perfect throw on and go dress, doesn't, doesn't say on here. Um, it's not overly complicated. I probably was glad it wasn't the first thing that I made, but I really like it. And this is the pattern block. Um, for a skirt that I often use to add on um, to other tops to make a dress. It's one of my go-tos for that. Um, it has a drawstring waist, um, but I have also put elastic through that and just done like a fake tie on it when I ran out of fabric once, and that worked as well. That's the Davenport dress. Um, I'm going to save that one till last. You can probably guess which pattern that is. The next three that I've got are dresses that I've made at different times in the last three years, but more for occasions um, two of them aren't necessarily my favourites but I just thought I'd, I'd mention them so I'll do those first so the first one that I made and I, I am going to come back to this is the Nina Lee Park Lane dress and blouse I've not made the blouse but I have made the dress lengthened the sleeve slightly didn't put the sh shoulder ruffle on and I really really like it they just don't quite fit me yet they're in the loft but I do want to revisit this now because it's a paper pattern and I cut it out. I could 
size it up and um, it does have you know a zip in and, and and things i mean i could do it um but i'm just kind of hanging fire lose some holidays lose some more weight after my holidays and then this is one so this comes in a uk size 6 to 20 i don't know if that size range has been extended since i started to do it it has a side zip um i'm sure it has a side zip and a keyhole opening at the back i can't deal with side zips so i just changed the pattern to be a, a invisible zip right up the back that kind of worked for me um yeah so let me know if you've made that one and what you think of it it's quite a traditional sort of tea dress so not the like as big a skirt as maybe some of the others but i've made maybe two or three of them really like it i have done it in not a massively stretchy jersey but i have done it in a jer in jersey as well very much like that the other one that i've made a couple of dresses out of to wear um to the ball and when we went for dinner at the ritz is probably one that a lot of people wear, make for weddings and their occasion wear which is the deer and door magnolia now i cut this one out with the lower bust but if i if i will make it again when i do i would do this one which is the higher crossover it was a little bit too low for me and i ended up stitching it in place it does have a split I didn't put the split in it wasn't needed um and it's a really nice make um again i think it has a side zip and i converted it to a zip at the back and um so i've got one that's quite dressy in a, a velvet and another one that's in a viscose um, and I put a little bit of like mustard, it's like brown with a pattern on. And I put a bit of mustard trim there and did a little tie at the back. And that one looks a little bit hippie ish. That one nearly fits me again. I'm so pleased. Um, and the velvet one, they cut the same size, but the velvet one was a stretch, and that's mahoosive on me now. And the obviously the other one doesn't have as much give, so that's a nearly fit, which is just interesting. Just shows you the difference with different patterns. So the size range for this is. Um, I'm just going to go with the bust it goes from a bust of 34 up to a bust of 40 no sorry it goes from a size i don't i never understand the european sizes and um, 34 to 46 which is a bust of 31 and a half up to a 41 and the finished garment measurements are a bust of 33 and 7 eighths um up to 43 and a quarter so that one at the moment that's why it doesn't quite fit me um but yeah that's that one i'm sure lots of you have made this if you want to look for occasion where just put hashtag magnolia dress in instagram and there's lots on there and then the one that i've used most recently um and has really become a favorite um for dressier dresses um like ball gowns i've made but i've also made it in gingham and kind of been a bit more like ditzy and casual with it and that is the style like bell woven dress there are a lot of similar patterns to this it's got a shared panel of elastic on the back uh here and um i did message somebody before i made it the first time to say do you need to put all the buttons on with the shearing and they went no you can just pull it over your head so i always cut um like do the skirt part now as a solid piece um and if i'm going like for evening wear it might i might have it like lower if i want it a bit more sort of discreet if you like i'd put then um, just a little button on on here but i don't feel like overly exposed in it and um, it's a really nice make again it's got the um oh god what's that word that i've just mentioned the burrito method and style like patterns yet again here we go are we four pages maybe woo -woo. this one well that one's all the sizes then you've got a cut and layout and then you've got pattern instructions here so when i, I was fine making it all because a lot of it's very straightforward but when it got to the burrito method which is explained here i just put on the friday pattern company davenport dress so long and did it that way um, I've tweaked and changed the sleeves a little bit you can see there are two options on there but i've done various different options so if you've watched me for a while you'll you'll see that or if you follow me on instagram search through my pictures you'll see the different options of, of that i've also um shared 
the front panel as well on one of those dresses and I really like that however I'd already cut it out and then I shared it and obviously what I should have done was shared a piece of fabric first and then cut it out that would have worked much better but it does fit and it is okay so what do you think my final pattern might be hello can I hear you it is of course my fave that I hated the first time I made it the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo I've talked about it on a lot. I'm sorry, I've probably bored you to tears about it. Um, I've mentioned it already. That is this dress here. Um, I've had different sleeves in it, different lengths in it. This one's got different lengths of tears. This one's got three tears in the skirt where you can see this one's one. Um, it is smocky. I don't like it as smocky. I've lowered the darts in it to work for my bust better. Um, you've got your add-on pack that you can get from the website with a button down back. I'm considering putting a zip in the back and changing the neckline on it next. Um, and at this current moment in time, I have 13 of this. So it went from my most hated to my most loved. And what I will do is drop, I think I've made one since this, but I will drop a link to a vlog that I recently did all about i think it was the 12 indigos that i'd made up till that point i'll drop a link in the description box to that so that was a whistle stop tour around my favorite patterns let me have a little slurp why do i feel the need to do that with my eyes i've got absolutely no idea okay if you're not interested in the next bit it's been lovely having you along thank you for your time this is my box that's arrived for the Liberty Beauty Drop. So, how does this work? There are loads of these sort of things out there in different countries, I'm sure, at the moment. But as you know, I love everything Liberty. And I had seen this when it was launched. I was like, mm, I'm not really sure if I would use it. Because I basically just don't really, or didn't really, I am getting better at investing time to look after my skin. I'm not massively bothered about putting loads of makeup on, but skincare and stuff I am quite interested in. Not necessarily high-end, high price. Um, I've shared a previous vlog about the budget stuff that I did that's really improved my skin. I've got to say, in the UK today, it's 30-odd degrees. It is now um, 20 past 6. I've been up since 6am. Didn't get a great night's sleep as normal. So... I have got a little bit of makeup on, not much at all, because I've been at work this morning. Um, but I thought I'd just share it. So when you open it, oh, it all becomes in cardboard. You've got that lovely Liberty print there. So how this works is you sign up for the Beauty Drop at Liberty and it's £20 a month. And four times a year, you get sent a Beauty Drop box with different things in it. So this is the first one. So I signed up um by the time you view this it's going to have been about a month to five weeks so the the boxes are like july october so i'm guessing it's maybe january and april so it's four times a year like quarterly so i assumed i'd missed the july one but then i noticed some people on instagram saying i've signed up um and i got a box and some people saying i didn't so i dropped them an email and said will I get one? I didn't expect it, but will I get one? And they said, yes, you will. It takes a couple of weeks. So I was really pleased with that. Um, so it's got happy beauty drop day. You might have seen this because obviously time-wise, this is quite a while after, but I just thought I'd share it with you. So I have used some of the products. So this is what you get. So every time you get it, there are different things in it. But you, you're investing £20 a month, but you don't use any of that money on the boxes so obviously these are provided by the brands and it gets posted out to you so effectively what you're doing is that 20 pound a month is being saved into your liberty account now one of my members she was chatting to me and i said oh i thought about it and she went well i love it um and she said i use all the products and i really like it and she went and you can use it on anything that isn't true. I have checked that out. I mean, you, you, you may be able to chance that because obviously, you know, I love Liberty fabric, but I do just love Liberty in general. I just, it's like, oh, when I go in that building in London. But I just thought, you know what? £20 a month, I won't really miss. But when we go to London, you can either then cash it in and spend it in store or you can shop online with it. So effectively, you're like, like saving your money over a year now obviously their beauty 
advent calendar looks amazing but it's quite expensive but i know um fiona that told me about it she said some people definitely kind of use that to save it and then buy the beauty calendar um but you can use it for anything in the beauty range online or in store so what's in this one let me run it through you so there's a couple of things so this one is um by Verdon, it's a Hortosa hand and body balm. And it is, what size is it? It is a 55 mil. It's really, really, ooh, I've just squirted it all over. So it is a hand and body balm. So I'll just rub that in. There we go. Rubs in really nicely. It does, I'm not going to go through all of the information in it. The next time I do do get one i'll go into more detail if you'd like that because you do get um a book with all of the, a leaflet with all of the ingredients in and then you get a booklet that has details of each product that's in the in the box so it it's got in a nutshell a must have addition i'll read this one out i'll just give you an example and um a must have addition to any modern bathroom sink and um, the hortosa hand and body balm from verdon has a luxurious velvet smooth texture infused with an uplifting fragrance to bring a dose of spring sunshine and rejuvenation to daily self-care rituals formulated with pumpkin seed oil oat extract shea butter coconut this hydrating balm infuses skin with moisture top tip applied to cleanse dry skin after bathing or throughout the day to maintain sumptuous soft and supple skin um, and receive a boost of energy from the balm's aromas now i love shea butter and coconut but for me it doesn't smell of those at all it's absorbed really nicely into your skin like i've got no greasy residue there at all and um, and it has a very natural sort of scent it the last time i opened it it didn't go everywhere at all but as you can maybe see there if i just kind of rub that in it i like i mean that's a little bit but that little bit is way more than i need for my hands so that would go like up my arms so really nice yeah, I wish I could describe the smell but I wish I could smell it. Have a smell. There. I know that's just a bit bonkers. So that is, the I'm going to end up covered in cream, Anna. So the other thing that I will um, mention, this is a small bottle. It's a de-stress. So it's a Romatherapy Associates de-stress muscle bath and shower oil. Um, so obviously um, I'm guessing this one add two capfuls into your bath or to soothe over your body or smooth over your body before you shower um so some of these things i'm going to take away on a holiday when you're watching this i'm sharing it with you on the day i come back from holiday so i might be able to let you know how they've gone um also that i've got this is by votary again so this is the same brand as this and this is the brightening hyaluronic serum and it's narcissus and aha and um, i've been using this all week and i've got to say my skin feels really good and um, so before i've been using that this was also in it by the brand ren i'm not going to go into the details now this is a 50 ml bottle so it's a good size it's a cleansing milk and you literally just rub that over your face for a general cleanse a couple of times a day and then follow it up with your serum and then obviously your creams and things after that now i do have a bit of a turkey neck and when i'm losing weight it does bother me more now than it used to before not enough that i'd ever want to do anything about it but i was watching um something that came up it's a uk tv program and they had a a segment of their show about this um, and what it was saying it's too late for me to stop it occurring but what they were saying is whatever you do with your beauty routine here you need to be doing it here and I thought that was interesting because this year that's what I have been doing and um, so anything that I'm using like this I would be using here as well and then whatever excess I've got I sort of wipe off here so that's kind of a bit of the beauty this one I'm taking on the plane um, I've seen lots of people making, I, I don't know the, the prices for these, but the company's called spacemasks.com. Now, this is one of the masks I've used, kind of the budget versions from Home Bargains in the UK. Um, so open the pouch and unfold your mask. Gently place space mask over your eyes. Fit the loops around your ears and with a couple of minutes, you'll feel your space mask heat up as the oxygen molecules in the atmosphere cuddle up to the mask's iron particles in a natural heat exchange. Drift off as you enjoy approximately 15 minutes of otherworldly warmth while your mind floats in space. Uh, the other ones are a lavender scent 
um, that I've used. This one's Essence of Jasmine and some Iron Powder. And our flight back, uh, we land. So I usually share this at about 7am UK time on a Friday. Um, we land back about 3am, I think we do back. So I'm going to use this on that because it's sort of a little bit of a night flight. And I thought, yeah, if I can just go with that, put a bit of chill out tunes in, like a bit of Ibiza chill out vibe music, have that on, my fluffy socks which are essential for flights, and no I don't go blue in them before you ask, so somebody once asked me that, like as if. So, two others that are just a little sample size, um, which are a shampoo and a conditioner, so you've got a peppermint shampoo, which is supposed to be good for an irritated scalp, and I do have psoriasis on my scalp, so these probably would do once or twice, and then you've got the obviously the same one in the conditioner, revitalise and conditioner, so I might chuck these in and give them a little try on holiday, I quite like a little bit of pampering on holiday, and then the final one which we have used a little bit so this is Wilhelm have I already had something Wilhelm no this is the first thing Wilhelm Perfumery New York did look this up the full size bottle of this is about 200 pound um, but it smells unreal um, so we were saying an iron me it kind of has a a very a familiar scent I wish you could smell this. So I put a very, it has, can perfume have a warmth? I think it can have a warm. Oh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And I probably would never spend that amount of money on myself. But what I do buy is kind of the, um, you know, the like the, I call them the knockoff versions of them. And there is one of this, I've already had a look. So I quite like the fact this comes in here a, I get to try it on my skin because can you remember a few weeks ago I reacted to stuff it's pretty much gone on my neck so I can react to fragrances and if I react to the actual fragrance I react to the knockoff ones because what I call the knockoff ones. So if I react to the actual ones because these are mi apparently made within the same perfumery and they have um, I'm going to say elements of the actual perfume in them um, I react to that as well so I do need to sort of test them out so this is a great way for me to test them them out then it just smells lovely and I'd probably wear it it would probably last me about a week and I was had a squirt I've had a squirt you don't need much of that if you just had that sort of behind your ears it gives off like a a really nice but not overpowering scent so I might try the knockoff version of that this is the knockoff version of Baccarat Rouge which is also about 240 pound a bottle. This was about 29 for 100 mils. And that's um, Essence Vault 461, if you do want to try that. I've not tried the original, but it smells absolutely lovely. So happy days. So that's everything that's in there. That's my empty box. But I guess once you've used the products, if you want like a storage box, these are really nice and they've got like lovely Liberty print in. So what's not to love? So I just thought I'd share that with you. So if you're still with me, thank you. Let me know if you try anything like this. There are loads of them around the world. Um, but as I say, you know, you pay £20, but that's just going into like a like a little treat me savings account for me. So happy days. I'll be pampering myself with that at some point. Um, so, yeah, I will be catching up with you with some actual sewing next week. Happy sewing and I will catch up with you then. So bye for now.